have uh, apparently have a lot of phlegm that uh, since I never speak outside. Okay, um, hang on one second here. I uh, okay, uh, hang on. Someone has told me on uh, the Discord, uh, the Replit Discord, that I should put my stuff in share my repls. Um, so I've gone ahead and done that. Uh, we do have about 30 seconds before the announced time of the stream, so I'm going to do a little bit of patter, but not like yesterday where I, uh, where I did way too much patter, uh, because I started the stream like 10 minutes early. Um, so we're, we're getting there. I've announced the stream, and no one's going to show up, by the way, of course, which, which is good, because I actually don't like people, and I don't want people watching me. There is one person in chat, but I don't know if they're really there or if, as their name implies, they are lurking. Okay, it's 10.30, here at least. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so yesterday I pretty much made a mess out of things, and it also turns out that I was trying to solve the wrong problem. Uh, I was trying to solve... I'll, I'll try to solve the correct problem today, and uh, hopefully correctly. Uh, but yesterday I was solving the wrong problem, and I also did it in a very ugly way. And you can see some of that ugliness, if you want, to come to the uh, replit in BC Lib staging about how I did this function, uh, converting data uh, elements, uh, converting, we really want to be able to find the position of data in a data file, uh, and we need to go two ways with that. We need to know which point of data a given, a given byte represents in the data, and we need to know if we want a specific piece of data, where in the file we'll find that. Unfortunately, it turns out the way I did it is just really ugly and really bad. So now, just to mislead you all, um, the you might ask what's sort of the purpose of this data server? Uh, and the purpose of this data, one possible purpose of this data server is, suppose someone wants to take uh, the land use in the world and create a map out of it. Um, then they could, they could request data from our server on an as-needed basis. They wouldn't request all the data, they wouldn't request all 32 megabytes in this case of data, uh, but it's you know eight to nine hundred gigabytes some other place for some other data, close to a terabyte for some other data. Uh, they wouldn't request it all at once because if they have the data all at once, they're not going to need a server for it. They will, however, like if they're mapping, for example, Southeast Florida, request just the data they need to map Southeast Florida, and even then they won't request it at high resolution because they don't need every single data point. They just need the data points that they're plotting on a map. Now, when I say that, some people are going to say, well, couldn't you just use uh, a tile server for that? Couldn't you just take the data that you have, tile it up, and put it into a tile server and, and be done with it? And the answer is yes. In fact, I've done that, and we're going to go there now. Uh, this is probably exciting. For me, not for you. Um, in fact, it is on GitHub Pages. And there's an ugliness here. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and put the OSM map on here. So, and this controls the opacity, so we can make it very light OSM map, very dark OSM map. We're going to want it dark for this. Um, and then let's go ahead and add our land use. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and see what's going on here. So, this is the land use, and the color. There is no key to this, I don't think. Uh, but but you can. There is a way to get to the key. Um, so we're going to notice here that Albuquerque, uh, it's not red for some reason. I forget. This is actually a different land use map, I think. But the idea here is that you can see that the, the gray here is the city of Albuquerque. It's an urban area. Uh, the blue-ish sort of here is the Rio Grande River, which is, of course, water. Not really, actually. It's actually very dry, but let's pretend it's water. Um, and the, the National Forest here is green, as you would expect. And you can here actually see the pixelation. Uh, because we're using higher opacity, I think. Um, and so, so yes, you can do this with a tile server. So what's going to go wrong here? Uh, and you can even do this, you know, I've, I've set it up for, you can even look at the climate. You can look at them both at the same time. Uh, the climate uh, of Albuquerque is fairly warm, of course. Uh, it does get colder up in the northern areas like Santa Fe, Taos, and, and uh, so Purgatory, and those areas. And, of course, it gets much colder up in Colorado and... Um, when you go east, this is actually not uh, just a heat map, it turns out. Uh, the climate uh, classification I'm using is called the Köppen-Geiger Geiger, Köppen -Geiger climate classification. It takes several things into account, but generally Albuquerque is a warm desert, and we know that. 
So we could look at both climate and land use, and uh, it is, um, and you know, control how much opaqueness we want. So this has already been written. Um, so what's what you might ask? Well, so what's the problem with this? Well, why can't we just use this? Why do we need a data server for all this? Can't we just have a tile server? And um, the problem with the tile server is, I mean, you can tweak it a bit, but the colors are fixed. So the, you know, if someone else wants to put them in different colors, can't do that. Um, the tiles are fixed. So if somebody wants data that doesn't exactly map, match a tile, they would have to, you know, they would have to manipulate the tiles a little bit to get the data they wanted. Um, but the biggest problem is I was going to create a, a game uh, that lets you, you know, be anywhere in the world and look at, uh, see what, um, what's there in the world. Um, now, of course, if you're going to be, a real person takes up, I'm going to say one square foot. That's not exact, but roughly speaking, one square foot. But certainly not as much uh, area as we're seeing here on the map. A very small subset of that area. Um, so let's, um, so what happens? So... It turns out the map I'm using here is not obviously very, um, it's obviously not very granular. In other words, the, the, the pixel sizes are big enough that you can actually see the pixels. But that's okay. Um, okay, I think that did something bad before I wanted to do something bad. Okay, so the pixel sizes, and this is actually, I uh, need to scroll down a little bit to show the whole map. But, um, but that's okay. I mean, if you're inside of this pixel, for example, you know that your climate, sorry, your land use is, I this, think this is forest, but whatever the land use is. So that's not the problem. Uh, you know, the data is only so granular, but the problem, and this is just a bizarre thing, if you zoom in, oh, it did happen exactly not the way I wanted. If you zoom into a tile map too far, and by the way, you'll notice here, um, hold one step out. So you'll notice here, oh, I hope this doesn't show off things I don't want to see. Um, I want to view the page info. Um, and you can see that the uh, media we're pulling here, we're pulling level 11 tiles, which is pretty damn good. So there's a there's a big tile set that I've created all the way down to zoom level 11. And that is, that is, there are quite a few zoom 11 tiles. In fact, there are two to the 22nd power of, of zoom 11 tiles. So let me go back for one sec and, and do this again. Okay, we're still looking at zoom 11 tiles. But there's going to be an issue here. The problem is, if you have a tile map, one of the cool things is um, when you zoom in, Leaflet is smart enough to use a lower tile level to, um, to show you what the data is here. So you don't have to have it necessarily mapped down to this pixel level, but open, uh, but Leaflet will show it to you like this. It's fuzzy now because I'm using, let me actually go ahead and go full opaque, because I'm using translucency. If I use full opaque, we should see it. No, that didn't work. And I think if I get rid of OSM, no. Wow, I am wrong about that. I thought we would be, would be able to see this uh, a bit better. Um, but okay, the problem is going to be, that's the problem. The problem is when you zoom into a certain level, um, either leaflet or your browser or some thing somewhere, and I think you can actually see this. Okay. Um, boy, I'm giving away a lot today. Uh, okay, and this is mixed content, but that I know that's, that's not the problem. The problem is going to be, so that's fine, that's fine. Um, you know, I might not be able to actually find it. Um, yeah, the, the debugger, okay. Okay, forget it. Um, the problem is basically, when you're looking at a tile, and you're looking at a tile map, uh, and the resolution is lower than the actual res you know the resolution you want leaflet does a good job of actually magnifying the pixels so it takes the uh, level 11 tile map and you know in in and, um, and uh, zooms it so you can still zoom in beyond level 11 and still see 
uh, what the pixels are. You can still see what the data is, uh, even though, of course, you're going to get pixel, uh, you're going to get pixelation because now you're actually looking at individual pixels inside of the uh, inside of the tile map. The problem is this only goes so far, and this is a thing I discovered a long time ago. It's really ugly. Um, if you zoom in 258 zoom levels, which is a zoom of 256 times, um, so that basically you're basically looking at individual pixels in the image because the, Im the, tile, the tiles are 256 by 256, it breaks stuff. It, uh, basically, for some reason, it won't let you zoom in that far. There is a zoom limit. So if you have your tiles down to uh, level 11, you can go as far as level 18, 11 plus 7, and you're fine. So this is a zoom level of 18, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. And you're fine. It'll still show you the pixels from the, the zoom image. You go further than that, and it won't. So once you get to level... Um, once you get to level 19 in this case, although, I mean, I could create, for, you know, I could create 12, level 12 pixels, level 12 tiles, but there's a hell of a lot of those. There's 2 to the 24th power of those, and that, that's getting big even for me. But it, and it wouldn't really solve the bigger problem, which is, um, if you zoom in even further, uh, you know, wh whatever, you, whatever level of tiles I create, 8 levels higher, it's going to break that. And since I'm doing a game where I want people to be, you know, use up about one square foot of, uh, of space on the map, I'm going to be zooming in really tight. Uh, and I don't want to create tiles that are super high level because A, it takes up a lot of space, and, you know, B, it's, uh, well, that is the main reason. It takes up a lot of space, uh, and it gets actually fairly ugly because you're going to have directories then with, uh, with, I mean, this directory already has, like, uh, images that have, you know, a lot of images, even when you allow for the fact that we're going 11, 4, 19, the, the uh, tile, the subtile 415 still has a lot of, a lot of uh, images in it. But the real reason, of course, is efficiency. Um, if you can get the data from a server, it doesn't matter how far you zoom in, provided that the server correctly gives you back the data that you requested. In other words, if you zoom in really tight, obviously the server will just say, okay, well, we're going to tell you this entire area is red, and the reason it's red is because you're actually looking at a single data point and you've zoomed into it uh, extremely far. So you're getting basically a solid, you're just looking at one pixel of data or one byte of data, but that's okay, we'll still give it to you. So the zoom level we're lo I'm going to be looking at, at some point even OpenStreetMap won't let you go too far, but I'm going to, yeah, and that's the, apparently hit that <laughs> level right there. Um, so let me zoom out a bit. Um, it turns out you, I'm not going to be able to do what I want in terms of one square foot, and I really wouldn't want to, because if you look at the number of square feet in the world, it's an insane number, even for someone who's creating a game. So let me uh, lower the land opacity here. Um, and in fact, even OSM won't support you at that level. So, you know, at some point that just goes too crazy. Now I'm going to find some place that's not where I live. This is not where I live. So, um, so at this level you can see houses. At this zoom level you can see, and I think if you go one zoom level further you can actually see, I'll go ahead and turn off land use now, it's not going to work anyway. You can actually see, no you can't. Um, there's a way to get actual house numbers, but apparently uh, whatever I'm doing um, is, I think if you it may have to use d uh, like a transport, a different uh, tile server. I'm using the default OSM tile server, so maybe I'm not getting house numbers. But I think at this level, which is the highest level OSM will let me zoom into, now of course I could, uh, like I did in a previous stream, I could actually get data from OpenStreetMap and draw my own maps once OpenStreetMap's zoom level doesn't go far enough. Because I could go in and, you know, get the data for this square area and draw these streets myself, draw these houses myself. They do have numbers, I could put them on there. But again, that's a big, that's a lot of work to do, given that without doing it, OpenStreetMap will let you get um, this kind of zoom level. So I really want to leverage the fact that OpenStreetMap has done all this good stuff for me uh, and not create my own maps. And so I'm okay with this level. I mean, my guy could be like a, you know, this. if this is a house, my guy could be a little pixel. Maybe he could even be more than one pixel. But, you know, we have some, some reasonable, um, the person has a reasonable size compared to this map. The person, um, you know, we don't have to go in much further, but it, the person isn't huge. And actually, if you watch one of my first videos, 
the original test person I created was like several square miles. And there are very few people who are several square miles uh, large, although some of them uh, I'm getting that way because of my obesity, but it's not quite that bad yet. So this would be an okay map to play on. Uh, the problem, of course, is we've now lost the land use, or if you put in climate, it also won't work. Um, you can't tell that it doesn't work unless I zoom out. But again, unless I zoom out far enough, yeah, there. So we have climate at this level. It's like literally, I think we're looking at one pixel here. If we go over here, we're going to look at another pixel. Come on, it's supposed to automatically update. Can cheat and do this, force it to update. But it really should update by itself. And it's decided not to, so whatever. Okay, but you know, again, it's this is too high of a zoom level to play a game at. So so that's that's sort of the motivation. Uh let's see how far we have to go. There it's broken now. That's sort of the motivation for creating a, a data server is we can give the end user uh arbitrarily precise data, I mean, it won't be, I mean, it won't be precise, it won't be accurate, but we can give it to them. If they want a very small chunk of data for a very small region, we can give it to them, whereas a tile map has some limitations uh, in that you have to have tiles, not necessarily for every level of data that you want, but for the levels of data that go up to it uh, minus uh, eight or seven or something. So that's the motivation for creating our server. Um, let's go ahead and go back over to our, so let's go ahead back to actually creating the server. Um, and it just occurred to me that you might not have been able to see my page info pop up. Uh, if you didn't, it, it shows that we were pulling tiles from the 11th tile level. Uh, in other words, zoom level 11. And again, that will work, you know, even if you go beyond 11, but not if you go to 19 or higher. Uh, and uh, OSM does actually offer uh, tile map tiles all the way down to level 20, maybe 21, I think. But anyway, that's that's so. This is the um, this is sort of the uh, rationale for creating a uh, a tile server. Sorry, for creating a data server that allows the end user to create tiles. Now, um, I did things so horribly yesterday. I'm going to actually create a new full. I'm, I'm going to upload. I've done this in Perl before, and we're not doing it in Perl now. But the Perl code, some of the Perl code is actually really useful. But since we're not going to use it. Um, here, we're gonna, I'm just going to create a folder called sample. So we're going to be able to upload some sample code that I'm not using here. Um, but we can convert, either convert to JavaScript, or we're not actually going to even do that. We're just going to look at it and, and see, why, uh, see how we want to format some stuff. So let me go ahead and let me see if there's anything else I wanted to show you guys. Oh, wow. Uh, hang on one second here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, upload some couple of things here. And these are, by the way, again, not magic things that you can only see here. These are all in my git, uh, in my bc git. It's in the map subdirectory, so none of this stuff is, you know, uh, private or exclusive to this. So let's go ahead and uh, upload PC maps. And let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and move into the right directory here in a second. And the other thing I wanted to upload, which is BC map server testing. Not super exciting either of these. Um, so let's go ahead and put these in sample because they're not it's not code we can use. Because we're writing in, in node, not in Perl. Okay, so there's a lot of crap here, but the important stuff that we want to look at here is this sort of thing. Um, the idea here is instead of having the user, the person who's calling the subroutine to get data inside of our Node.js, know everything about the map they want, we, we actually can declare a maps hash. And in that hash, we can give information about the land use map. That would include things like where the, where the file is that represents the land use, uh, what type it is, raster or polygon. Um, right now we're only dealing with raster maps. It turns out you can also have SHP files, which are polygon files, uh, that have to be handled differently. Uh, that That's a more advanced step. That I'm, I'm doing that in Perl, but I'm not sure I want to do it right now in, in uh, Node.js. 
the size of the data. So right now, our land use.bin file, uh, every piece of data is represented by a single byte. Uh, this could be a double byte, and it could, in theory, even be a number of bits. But but again, for convenience, we're going to go with uh, a one byte data, a file where every piece of data is represented by one byte. Um, and this says some other stuff here that's not really useful to us right now. But um, over here, we do something similar, but we also put in some more, oh boy, a lot of stuff here. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm lying about that. The other stuff we need to know is things like, okay, oh, here it is. And this is, it's commented out code. In addition to knowing where, where the data is, uh, how many bits the data takes up, we also need to know the data bounds. In this case, the north data limit is uh, 90 minus 90. That's sort of standard west, you know. The land use data actually goes across the whole world. And, you know, this right here is the whole world. Uh, and we need to know how, what the resolution is in the data. And uh, it turns out... <laughs> It turns out in the land use file that I'm using, which is much bigger than this one, because this is just like a tiny version of it, the resolution is this in degrees in both sides. And if we have that data, we no longer need to have the user send it to us each time. We can just refer to the map, the land use maps hash, and get the data from there. Okay. Now we will have a problem. Okay, guys. Um, unfortunately, um, there should be a way to put the stream on hold, isn't there? I mean, I can just mute my mic. Uh, unfortunately, and this has nothing to do with the stream, I'm really sorry about this, um, I am becoming hypoglycemic. I have type 2 diabetes, and I use insulin, and uh, usually I need to eat by noon. It's only 10.50, but I guess my body has decided it hates you, and so I will need to handle this unless you want to see hear me die on stream, which is not that exciting because um, if you could see me die on stream, that would be more exciting. But but I do need to tend to this hypoglycemia within the next uh, few minutes uh, because I will yeah I probably won't actually die. I'll go into a coma at some point. Uh, although I'm probably still pretty far away from going into a coma. Um, and then after I go into a coma, if uh, you know someone doesn't come and help me, I will die. But that's not it's pretty boring listening to someone in a coma. They don't say much. Um, and I actually know that before I go into the coma, I don't babble or anything. I just, well, I haven't gone into a coma before, but I do know that so my blood sugar gets lower. I don't really babble that much, so it's not very interesting listening. So this is a fancy way of saying that I'm going to have to end the stream now. I might pick it up later today, uh, but I can't promise anything. And I do apologize that the stream is this short. Um, really sorry about it. Next time I'll try to check my blood sugar level before I stream. Um, and and adjust as necessary. So do apologize. Um, I, you know, I'm sort of trying to see how long I can hang on before it becomes severe hypoglycemia, and uh, lots of fun there. But sorry about this, guys, and you know, you can, if I do record something, if you're going to leave now and come back, or don't want to come back, I do post all of these things to YouTube, so you can catch the next one on YouTube if you can't catch it live. Uh, one more time, I'm going to apologize, and then I'm out of here. Okay, bye for now, guys. Sorry.